YouTube have permanently banned controversial YouTuber Leafy is here. Um, this is an interesting one for me because uh, again, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't necessarily class myself as a con as a con. What's it? What's that? What, what they call them? Commentary channel or anything like that. I don't think that's necessarily what I do. I just try and I talk about cultural things on here that might be cultural commentary but i don't do it in the way of like you know exposing people or bemoaning why tana did this you know i don't really care i know these guys are scumbags they do one or two things that are funny i report on it but that's about it. i keep it moving but there has been a shift in the general tone um of videos on youtube it does seem to be a less of a nasty place less of a mean place um people tend to toe the line a bit more in terms of what they say they hold back on certain things people are more comfortable about doing brand partnerships with like really big corporates brands and sponsorships uh i guess because adsense money isn't what it used to be in the past but everyone is kind of um a little bit more it feels like a little bit more professional with what they do they kind of treat their channel like an actual network show they don't just treat it like them turning on the, sh the camera in their home and just you know talking into it uh, like i do they kind of go about it in a very, very professional manner, like as if they're like trying to pitch a show in the future or something. So it makes sense that the, what gets said on, or what's allowed or what's kind of tolerated on the platform will change too. And obviously with YouTube constantly moving the goalposts, constantly not telling the creators and the audience what the actual goalposts are, what the reasons are behind people getting banned, suspended. It was bound to happen that somebody like a Leafy is here who's probably on the more edgier side in terms of uh, commentary channels would eventually end up getting banned, especially in the current iteration of YouTube that we have at the moment. And if you believe stuff, you know, like H3 says, who as annoying as the H3, H3 guy is, Ethan Klein, as much as a cock he turns into over the years like he's quite this is not he's been one of the weirdest people to follow on youtube very likable when they were doing the h3 productions videos um you kind of were rooting for him especially you know once he started hooking up with healer with Hyla Klein, sorry, or have you put, so is it Hyla Klein, Hyla Klein? My apologies if I pronounce it wrong. But you, you were just rooting for him, innit? He just kind of seemed like a cool dude. And then suddenly he went completely free. He just turned and just turned into this really, I don't know. He kind of ended up having the same, he kind of um brings the same feelings I have about like Frank, Philip DeFranco. You know what I mean? Just people you just don't want to watch any of their content you despise them as people everything they represent or stand for is just despicable they're just fake phony dudes who for the most part have sold out to youtube in some way shape or form which is understandable you know it's their main revenue stream but they've really changed on their audience that's the only issue i have with it and i guess ethan had the same thing and if you believe what he says who but again i'm saying all this to say he's very knowledgeable when it comes to youtube politics and you know what goes on behind the scenes maybe he's got sources maybe he's just a bit of a geek and knows all that information but he was you know the right was on the wall when he said oh i'd love to see what you know leafy would do i'd love to see leafy survive on youtube you know now doing the same video in the past and i guess he was right because he's been permanently banned and it's a bad thing for everyone involved i think the girls of whether or not you like his content or not i think it's a bad thing that youtube would categorically permanent ban somebody um based on the content they're creating without giving them any strikes without giving them a road to redemption uh without maybe outlining exactly why that person was removed from the platform um was it because of the videos you made on pokemon i know towards the end he started just clickbaiting uh, his videos that had nothing to do with pokemon just put it in the thumbnail but you know they obviously have grievances he obviously doesn't agree with what she does now do, do i agree with every way he went about it probably not but you're allowed to not like people on the internet you're allowed to say mean stuff about people on the internet you should be allowed to anyway now if it crosses the line and it goes a bit over the top then it's up to the platform to decide whether or not you should continue saying those things on their platform but you can say it as long as you want depending on um how how far you want to take it so i think for everybody involved obviously you can sit there and say hey i'm not going to make content like leafy is here but it's still concerning to know that youtube can just decide to ban you with no warning with no heads up uh with no idea of what you've done with no strikes and your channel and your and your kind of revenue stream or your ability to connect with your audience is completely evaporates, right? But obviously, with Leafy is here, it's not the same thing. Um, I think he's obviously built up, I guess, and amassed a bit of an, a bit of fortune, especially since he's been on YouTube for a while. I think I've heard stories of him investing in various stocks and stuff. So I'm pretty sure he's okay. And I'm sure, and it seems that from the content he was creating, that comes from somebody that's a bit free. If you've got a few money, that's when you start making six videos on Pokemon, right? You know exactly, you're po you know you're poking the bear. 
but you don't care because you've got FU money. So I'm sure he's doing okay. But for other content creators, I think this is a concerning thing and we should be taking notice of it and asking questions right, of YouTube. Like, why was he banned? What's the what's the reason? Um, have they updated the terms of service? Uh, is it because he was specifically going at Pokemon who happens to be a bit of a sacred cow within YouTube or within commentary channel places, right? There are certain people you just can't say certain things about. I guess you can make however you can make however many videos you want, bemoaning or um, defaming, uh, basically harassing and call and you know and really saying some nasty stuff about the Kylie Jenners, the Chris, um, the Jeffrey Stars, the Tana Mogos even is a good example. There are people that you can attack, Keemstar. You can make videos about them all the time, and no one's gonna say anything. I think even H three is a good example. How many, um, what you call it, um, content nukes did he make about Keemstar? effectively you know with the hopes of essentially getting him to run off youtube really i would imagine you know to, especially the um ethan klein current iteration we have at the moment now he can say as well about defending himself but i'm sure he despises keemstar enough to hope that in the back of his mind one of his videos would necessarily kind of contribute to his downfall right so that, i think that's the issue at hand anyway um but this is a virgin article about it. it says youtube permanently bans controversial creator leafy is here it says YouTube has banned the controversial creator Calvin Lee, well known as Leafy, is here for repeatedly violating the company's harassment policies. The ban follows big changes to YouTube's harassment policies meant to deter behavior that in part help creators in the commentary community like Leafy develop a following. Although he Vey Lee has a history of making videos that include offensive comments about other creators on the site, including a now deleted video from 2016 that mocked the appearance of another creator, of course The Verge would mention something like that, and it absolute donkey sticking a foot in. I hate them. Um, the termination only came after his channel amassed at least three million. Uh, what? At least three violations of YouTube's personal policies over the last ninety days. That includes videos created featuring cyberbullying, including malicious insults, name calling based on someone's appearance, gender, or chat orientation. So I guess he did get some warnings. Encouraging viewers to, dis to disrupt other creators' streams. Uh, Vail told YouTube creator Daniel Kimsa that he didn't receive any emails about specific videos prior to the ban. Okay, so somebody is lying. YouTube are telling him they did give him. I guess YouTube is saying that he has. I guess what YouTube is arguing is that within that 90 day span he did three things that kind of made them think hey we need to ban this guy but what YouTube should be doing under the, according to the terms of service is that they should be informing you when you do break the law when you do break their rules sorry break the law when you do break their rules and, and you do kind of uh, skirt away from the agreeing or abiding by the terms of services but he didn't get any of that kind of um, heads up it continues here says we have strict policies that prohibit harassment on youtube and we removed content that violates our policies when flagged to our attention a youtube spokesman told the verge which obviously is dangerous too in it's all toxic isn't it the people that you don't like who are going out there and telling you to go and harass pokemon via her discord and stuff you know i don't agree with that whatsoever but then there's also on her side you can rally up a bit of frenzy and tell your fans to go and mass flag a video and then YouTube, more likely than not, especially if you're, I think if you're a bigger content creator, they're going to get somebody to look at that case for you. But I'm assuming if you're a lower creator on the totem pole, for sure, they're just going to, you know, they're just going to run that through a bit of AI, determine what the decision is and, you know, put a strike on your account or ban it completely. It continues, it says YouTube has started in since in, in, instituting new measures to try and prevent creator on creator harassment um the company came under fire from former vox host carlos mazza who started all this stuff right carlos mazza is the absolute you know oh god almighty man this he's the one that started all this and you know look what he done look what he caused because he got annoyed about louder crowders saying mean things about him instead of just ignoring it or you know putting a rebuttal out there or just deciding hey someone doesn't like me as a person it's okay like he decided to go in this kind of tear that in, in in theory damaged everybody really in it right this whole battle we had with um um louder crowd on youtube how the whole entire co youtube creator landscape for the worst part and i'm sure if we go on new cast master's channel now he probably hasn't even uploaded that many videos right especially now we found out that he's comes from wealth and he's not as downtrodden he's not a downtrodden hipster or he's not like a starving artist as he kind of uh, led people to believe or didn't want to create the, the correct the narrative of it's like these people. Anyway, so the company came out of fire after former Vox host Carlos Mazza tweeted out multiple instances where conservative pundit Stephen Crowder used homophobic and other derogatory language about him. 
Um, the U YouTube didn't respond to the situation right away, but after the backlash continued, the company temporarily removed Crowder from his partner program, um, essentially cutting off the channel's ability to promote advertisement. CEO Susan Wojcicki acknowledged that YouTube needed to institute new policies. Valley, who became close to a five million subscriber at the time of his ban, found himself at the center of a high profile dispute over the last few months, most notably with HVA3 Ethan Klein and the Twitch streamer um, Pokimane. Uh, tweeted in Valley tweeted in early June that he received two channel strikes today for harassment on my new videos, noting that he was setting all these videos to private to hopefully avoid the third strike. Um, YouTube's community guidelines state that the free content strikes will lead to a channel termination. YouTube did not comment on which videos led uh, to Valley's ban. Let's be Valley's ban arrived after he started an ongoing video series about Anis in which he lobbed personal insults at her and her fans, leading to criticism from several high profile Twitch streamers. Exactly. What are Twitch streamers doing commenting on YouTube? drama like stay in your lane who cares what i have to say and youtube creators um videos that contain prolonged insults and may encourage viewers to disrupt other people's streams people stream violate the company's um guidelines Vice ban didn't come as a shock to some community but the channel's termination is a stark reminder of how different youtube is in 2020 compared to early 2010 and the same like twitter in it twitter's the same thing too what you could get away with saying on Twitter in 2010, or not get away with what people didn't really bat an eyelid at, or maybe because you didn't have the exposure you have now, especially if you gain if you gain some followers or clout, is just night and day, really. And you only have to look at some people's like, you know, when you find out you find those screenshots of people's RTs, retweets, so they just writ RT. You're like, bloody people said some spicy stuff back in the day. Katija says um, YouTube's new creator, creator, creator on creator harassment policy was specifically drafted to address videos from personalities who use their platform to attack others, which had previously been more common on the platform. So, hey, man, Leafy's banned. Again, I, I, I'm not really a fan of his content. I think that whole whiny moaning about people, what people are doing on YouTube can get a bit boring really quickly. Um, I tend to be on the line of if I don't like something, I just won't watch it or support it whatsoever. That means even watching commentary channel bits and bobs and feces the only thing that i have an exception of is watching um you know dsp videos i just can't get enough of watching some of his fails on live stream but i don't know man i think it's concerning for everyone involved all creators on youtube i think you should be concerned if you should be worried that youtube can just terminate your account for saying mean things about somebody else on the platform or by saying what they interpret to be mean things and again where's the line you can say about certain people but you can't say about others keemstar can you know make get made loads of videos about what he's done in the past rightly or wrongly and uh, people will essentially want to get him terminated from hit from youtube but he's been able to kind of survive um you know but it's okay to attack him but to attack pokemon not so much you know what i mean and i'm sure if somebody did the same thing to ethan which i'm sure has happened I'm for sure some of his videos i forgot there was that like one guy who uploaded a video that was really good and he had to like re-upload it take out certain bits and bobs there are certain people that they really make it difficult for you to kind of critique so i think it is really it really is one rule for one and one rule for others it's concerning that going forward i'm sure leafy will be fine he doesn't need anyone to kind of you know uh, protest for him i'm sure he's pretty okay defending himself in 